Quick revision video on fuel cells. So some basics first. In all fuel cells, the fuel gives up its electrons at the anode, that's a negative electrode, and oxygen gains the electrons at the cathode, that's the positive electrode. And just a reminder of an easy way to remember that reduction takes place at the cathode, red cat. And in fuel cell vehicles, the fuel is stored in a tank and oxygen comes from the air. So fuel cells are different to storage cells whereby the chemicals are actually stored within the storage cell. Here they're stored externally. So we're going to focus on the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell and then we'll finish with the methanol fuel cell. So the first hydrogen oxygen fuel cell I'm going to look at is one with the acid electrolyte. So you'll notice in the half equations at the top there we've got H plus ions. So you can see the hydrogen gas is coming in at the left, that's going to the anode, and the oxygen's going in at the right, that's going to the cathode. So if we focus on the half equations now and look at the electrode potentials, you'll notice that the electrode potential for the oxygen half cell is more positive. So it's going to run in the forwards direction, so left to right, and that means the hydrogen one will run in reverse, so right to left. So the hydrogen's coming to the anode and it's losing its electrons. So you can see it's losing the electrons and forming H plus ions. So the H plus ions, remember these, it's an acid electrolyte. So it's populated with H plus ions anyway. So the electrons are being given up. They're going to go around this external circuit. The H plus ions travel through what's called the electrolyte membrane. So this dotted line here represents the electrolyte membrane and that allows the movement of ions through the cell. But it keeps the hydrogen and the oxygen apart. We don't want them to come into contact otherwise it could be explosive. So the overall reaction, so if we think about combining these two half equations now, we're going to have half an O2 reacting with H2 creating water the electrons and the H plus ions would cancel. So there's the overall equation and you'll notice there water is the only product of this fuel cell. So we'll finish by working out the voltage of the cell, really straightforward this one, most positive minus least positive, so it's 1.23 volts. So if we look at the alkaline electrolyte now, so you've got the same thing going on, hydrogen coming in at the anode, oxygen at the cathode, and you'll notice it's populated now with OH- ions. So we'll do the same with the electrode potentials, so the most positive is the oxygen one again, so that's running left to right, hydrogen one running right to left. So just as before, the hydrogen is losing its electrons and they're going around the external circuit like that. And the oxygen is picking them up at the cathode. The overall reaction, so we've got half an O2 reacting with H2 and that leaves one mole of water because those two will cancel down to one because of that one there and the electrons and the OH- ions cancel, of course. So again, the only product is water. The E cell, or the voltage of the cell, most positive minus least positive, so 0.4 minus minus 0.83 is the same voltage as before, 1.23 volts. So in a fuel cell vehicle, you've got what's called a fuel cell stack, and the best way to think about that is like a loaf of bread. So each individual slice of bread is the fuel cell. Remember it's only producing 1.23 volts, but you can create a large voltage by just adding together lots of these fuel cells in series. And that's the fuel cell stack. So we'll look at the methanol fuel cell now. So we're gonna look at the one with the acid electrolyte. So you can see the H plus ions there. We're told that at the anode, methanol is converted to carbon dioxide, and at the cathode, oxygen is converted to water. So we're going to come up with the half equations for each electrode. So the starting point for the methanol one is basically CH3OH is turning into CO2. 
electrolytes. So because it's the acid electrolyte, we're going to use H2O and H plus ions to balance the equation, to get the atoms to balance, and then we'll finish off with the electrons. So you can see we're short of an oxygen on the left, so if I put a water molecule in there, and then we're going to tidy this up with H plus ions now. So we've got three, four, five, six H's on the left, so we need six H pluses on the right. And now in terms of charge, we've got to get the charges equal on both sides. So we've got no charge on the left, but we've got six plus on the right. So we need to bring the overall charge on the right down to zero, so it balances. So we need six electrons. So that will be the half equation for the anode. And you can see, same thing's happening. The fuel, methanol in this case, is giving up its electrons. We move on to the cathode now, so oxygen converted to water, so we've got O2 going to H2O. So we'll start with the oxygen, so if we put a 2 in front of the water, that deals with the oxygen, and we're going to need 4 H pluses, and so charge-wise we need to bring the overall charge on the left down to 0, because we've got no charge on the right, so we need 4 electrons this time. So the overall equation will look like this. So what have I done here? I've multiplied this equation by 3 over 2 to get the electrons up to 6. And that's left us with the overall equation you can see there. And we'll finish with some advantages and disadvantages of fuel cell vehicles. So obvious advantages, less pollution, petrol and diesel, fossil fuels, and they produce carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and carbon particulates or soot. They also produce nitrous oxides, whereas fuel cells only produce water. Fuel cells are far more efficient, so petrol engines typically are less than 20% efficient. Fuel cells somewhere between 40 and 60%. And finally, we could say that there's an unlimited supply of fuel because, for example, hydrogen can be obtained from water, bioelectrolysis, and methanol could be obtained from biomass, so both renewable. Disadvantages now, so we've got no infrastructure in the UK at least for storage and transport of hydrogen. It's very difficult to store the hydrogen as a pressurised liquid. You would need a huge thermos flask in your boot of your car because hydrogen needs to be kept as a liquid and it boils at minus 253 degrees Celsius. The fuel tanks have a limited lifespan so they would need replacing quite often and also fuel cells themselves have a limited lifespan. The fuel cell production involves use of toxic chemicals. And finally, the extraction of hydrogen from water is not always green. If you can electrolyze the water using renewable energy, so for example from solar power, um, like they do in California, then you can say that it's green fuel. Whereas in the UK, where it's not particularly sunny and you'd have to rely on fossil fuels to provide the electricity to electrolyze the water, then it's not green.